Blog Talk Radio. Hi, and welcome to Conscious Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Linda Summers, and we've got a great show for you today. Our topic is Soulful Creativity, Finding Happiness and Creating from the Heart with Dada Aragante. And before we bring her on board, I'd like to give you a little bit of background information about her. Donna has been a digital designer specializing in interactive and multimedia design for 12 years. She's worked in the entertainment industry as an art director, leading, designing, and launching some of the most innovative and engaging online campaigns for their high-end clients for nine years. Two years ago, in 2013, she left her job from the agency to pursue building her own business so that she can spread her wings with her gifts, which she believed back then was more than just design. She knew she had an ability to inspire people and empower people to be visible online so that they too can share their gifts with the world. This is why she is so passionate about branding and helping launch small business owners online. She made the decision to focus on helping visionary, conscious, social entrepreneurs because she wanted to be in that space and have those yummy conversations with them. Some of her most beloved clients are leaders in the conscious transformation industry, Zena Muska, Gay and Katie Hendricks, Barnett Bain, Natalie and Glenn, Ledwell, Preston Smiles, Brooke Alexander, and much more. And so with that, I'd like to welcome Donna to the show. Hi, Donna. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's so great to have you on. This woman, anybody listening, is the most vibrant, playful, fun, real, authentic person. Just create, You know, you just bring so much of yourself and your creativity is just contagious, really. Thank you so much, and thank you for, for really seeing me. It's so funny every time somebody says, oh, she's so authentic. It's so funny. It's like, but it's, you know, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't try so hard to be authentic. Right. Um, but thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, and they kind of really, you know, you have such a um, a diversity of things that you've done, you know, just being out there in the art, being an art director and designing and launching. It's really kind of you brought all it together and helping people. But, you know, um, I really just like that your approach and how you, you do things. So I kind of want to bring it to the listeners. And first of all, really, what is the process how you start with people? Like if you have a new client, because I know we've got some points of interest that I want to do, and that's really standing out, designing, design brand and launch blueprints. So we'll kind of dive into that as well. But is there a process that you have that you start with people? Yes, I do. And um, it's actually my one of my favorite parts. I mean, other than, you know, actually going into the design process and the articulation process of the brand, um, whenever I – start on this project with my clients, we just like, you know, for like the first week or so, we'll just like connect and I'll get to know more about who they are and really just um, soak in everything I can about them so that I can also really like feel who they truly are because a lot of the things that we articulate in a brand like, you know, the visual branding and the copy a lot of those things come afterwards, you know, and um, there's a lot of internal things that happen. Uh, the things you can't really describe or articulate, it's a lot of things that you feel. So I, I guess you can say that I really feel into them. I soak them up energetically. Um, I soak up their energy in the way they talk, in the way they present their, themselves to, to me and other people. I I watch everything that they do. There's a lot of things that they can't say about themselves, and they can't describe who they are, what they are to me in in words. So I think of all the ways I can really um, soak them up in all the different um, uh, senses that I have, and then from there, I you know internalize everything, and then I start kind of like categorizing things in my head and, you know, in my soul of where I feel things can be articulated into, you know, design and copy and, and you know, the way the website would feel. I start visualizing it in those ways. So it is a very creative process and 
a lot of it also is intuitive, I would say. Um, I mm-hmm. really put the combination of my intuition and my creativity into the practical, you know, um, sense of it. So it, it goes hand in hand. But I really got to say that the most exciting part is really learning about them and soaking them in because I feel like I enter into a new world every time and yeah. um, to fully receive them and their gifts. I mean, that's why I wanted to help visionary entrepreneurs because it's not only are they so gifted in what they do, but the the reason why they do it is really what gets me so excited of like why they want to help other people, the story behind why they want to help other people, what happened to them in their lives that inspires them to take, you know, action and to really live their truth and and um face all of these obstacles in order mm-hmm. to get to a place where they see the light. I mean, the transformational journey um uh, is just so inspiring. So uh, you know, I, I get more uh, fulfillment. Um, you know, I mean, I don't just get fulfillment from launching them, but from the journey itself. Like, it's just so amazing. I can't really, I hope I described it well, but there's so, no, so many things I can't describe in words. <laughs> absolutely. So do you find, so what if someone comes to you um, and doesn't really have an idea? They sort of do, but they don't really have it, you know, um like defined, so to speak. It's kind of like, you know, this is what I like. I'm not sure what to take with it. Do you have people like that that come to you that are not really quite sure and then you can draw that out? Because this is kind of where we're going, how it stands out for that person. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I always do a branding questionnaire, and there's key questions that I ask in the questionnaire. Number one is, you know, what is your gift? What is it that you're, you know, not, not just things that you're good at, but what is your zone of genius? Like the things that you like intuitively are so, so gifted at. And then the second question I ask is, who do you want to help? Um, like, like what type of people will need and can benefit from your gifts? And then mm. the next part is, you know, how can we bring it together and, um, you know, create some kind of languaging around that to say, hey, I'm this, I'm good at this, I want to help people um, who need this. And then there's always a because. There always has to be a why behind everything you do because Mm -hmm. people will not buy into or invest in you if, you know, just because you're good at something. Because there's like 10 million people in the world who can do the same things, right? Like there's Mm -hmm. so many people out there who can do branding and can design a website and can write copy and all that. But it's the why behind why, you you know, it's the why behind why you do what you do that people Mm -hmm. get drawn to you. So, um, so yeah, those three key things. And, and I try to keep it really simple because, you know, we always try to, I mean, (laughs) we sometimes try to over complicate things um, and it's the creative mind at work you know it always tries to find like 10 million ways to do things but but I always start with those basic questions I love that so when you talk about standing out so that's when you're finding their uh, you're diving really into them and feeling them can you kind of elaborate like standing out you know um, what you what you mean by that sure yeah so I'll tell you what not standing out means first. Um, yeah, standing, out doesn't, <laughs> standing out doesn't mean wearing a costume or trying to outshine anyone else or, mm-hmm. you know, trying to, to, to grab people's attention just for the attention. Standing out is about being clear. It starts internally. It's, it's about being clear on who you are so that you know exactly how to communicate your values to people. To start, it's from the inside out, not from the outside in. And um, when you're clear on who you are and you're congruent with your message and you know exactly the value you bring out into the world, then you are going to stand out organically to the people who will be drawn to you. So that's really the secret to finding your mm-hmm. soulmate clients, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And so um, really having that clarity and 
it takes work to get to that clarity <laughs> again because oh, yeah. sometimes you know it's hard for us to to you know articulate you know, all of those things because we also have to often look from the outside in um and there's a process to it but i would say that standing out it starts from the inside of really knowing who you are what you offer and how, and the way you communicate it to other people mhm it, well, it's like you said, too, um, it's like really finding your essence. And what I love about that is that, you know, it's such a beautiful thing because we're all so unique and we have our own, like in your videos, you say your own flavor and your own vibe. And it's to find that within yourself and not, you know, try to go out and just do something just for the sake of doing it, you know, and trying to, like you said, just stand out to draw the attention in and all that. But it's really finding your essence. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, um, there's it's 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 a two way street because you should never do anything just for you because you know it's as a selfish thing. Like for example, um, like I wouldn't just try to be something because it's fun for me and there's no purpose. There should always be a purpose to everything you do. Um, so when it comes to your essence and your vibe, yes, be yourself, but also bring out the parts of you that will be in service and will serve other people. So, you know, and, and that's kind of like a formula, right? So it's 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 part, it's the half, half of the formula is your essence and half of it is your, you know, your qualities, your attributes, your character, and per, you know, your personas that will show up for your clients. Because if you're just yourself and, you know, like for myself, I, again, like I, I am a vibrant person. That's just who I am naturally. I actually, like, I love dance. I incorporate dance into my brand. But that was a conscious and very deliberate decision because I want to be an example for people to come out and bring that out of themselves because that is really mm -hmm is what's going to make you unique. So I didn't just do that because I wanted to. You know, I did it because I wanted to be an example. So for me to be in service of my audience, I want, I, I want to show them what it looks like to be yourself and be, cel and, and be celebrated just by being yourself and also how you can be yourself while being in service of other people. So that that's the recipe right there. So it's half your essence, half, mm -hmm. you know, who you need to be to show up for your clients and your audience. And mm -hmm. that recipe right there is how you you take those two things and that's how you articulate your, you know, your personal style, your graphics, your copy, everything that you do in your marketing. And, it, and of course, to build your brand. Absolutely. I love that. So then how does that lead into once you've established that, your design brand, when you're designing your brand, because you really are the brand. I mean, well, the person is the brand, correct? Yeah, so I help um, solopreneurs um, particularly, and I help them with their personal brand. So, yes, so um, we focus on you being the face of the brand. And so is there, is this the kind of thing do you have, so this is really having the, the questions that you have to helping them, so it kind of all leads into, so they kind of know once they find out their essence, then they can design that around them, and then that's what they're bringing to the table. Exactly. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. Some, you know, we always start with that as the foundation, because without that foundation, it would be hard to communicate anything um, from then on. Like, imagine building a website and not knowing your identity. I mean, I mean I've seen it happen before where, you know, mm. people have to redo the whole website because they don't feel like it's, you know, it reflects their essence and it doesn't communicate their value. Um, mm -hmm. So we always start with, like, knowing your essence, knowing who you serve and how you can show up for them. And then from there, he communicated. Mm -hmm. I know I've done that myself, where I've just done it because it's based upon what I do, not necessarily the essence of who I really am. But then I think, too, it's like finding, you know that, but bringing that forth, you know, and really being, revealing yourself, you know, at such that level that 
I feel that people will be drawn to that person once they bring that, like what you're doing is is bringing that forth. Yes, I and I, I, I also just want to say that uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't want to come off as like saying it as an easy thing. I, I think mm-hmm. the process of branding yourself will be one of the hardest things you can you will do in your business because it really allows for you to see yourself like under a magnifying glass. And you'll be able to see your strengths and weaknesses. And not a lot of people are comfortable with doing some kind of, like, self-evaluation, you know. It takes a lot of courage to look into yourself in that way. Um, and, for I mean, I'm just speaking for, I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience and also I've witnessed my clients go through it as I, like, hold their hand through the process. Because when I went through my own branding um, process, I I I had a little bit of an identity crisis, um, <laughs> and I say that now like so lightly, but it was so excruciating for me because um, yeah, I had to face myself, and as it's such a personal challenge, right? When we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, okay. What are we good at? What are we not good at? And then how how can we then, you know, take that information and then create something from it? Um, and, you know, when you have to just remember the reason why you got into this whole thing in the first place was to help other people, right, and make a better life for yourself, having a business for yourself so that you have the freedom you know, you have to remember all of your whys all the time. But when you're in that process, you kind of, like, go into, like, a tunnel vision where, okay, it's like you have to look into yourself. And it's not, it's not that easy. Um, but I will tell you, though, that because of that experience that I had with myself, I was able to then, you know, support my clients through it. And it was such a blessing, and I'm so glad I went through it. Um, I got to tell you, like, I felt like an imposter, too. Like, I felt like, I shouldn't be helping people with this because I can't do it for myself. Like, what am I doing? You know, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, uh, it, it was it was it was very difficult. But I'm again, I'm so happy I went through that because now I can tell you that I'm human, and because even though I have these superpowers, you know, I had I had to go through my kryptonite time in order for me to be more of service to others, you know? So, um, mm-hmm. and everybody has that same story. Um, everybody has that same story. We all have gone through something where we fell on our knees and we didn't know what to do and we didn't have clarity. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, and I um, I have a formula um, that, that that I use to help people extract their essence and, I use an, mm-hmm. uh, an acronym. It's called Beans, and uh, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I, I made this up because I, I think of branding um, like building a house, and the beans is like you know what holds up the house, <laughs> and so yeah. Beans stands for um, B stands for belief, what you believe in, and your why, right? Why you're doing what you're doing. Um, e stands for your essence, of course. A stands for archetype, which is you know how you show up for other people. And how they see how the world sees you, um, and stands for your message. And then, lastly, a story is also going to be one of the things that will help you stand out and really resonate with your audience. Because it's no one will have the same story as you do. We all have a unique story, and when we become courageous enough to tell our own and and you know, show the world that, hey, I'm human, I've made mistakes, but guess what? I've learned from them, and now I want to help others, you know, not go through what I've been through or have the same success that I've had. So, um, and now, you know, I also embrace my own story, and mm-hmm. and it is the story I tell now that, hey, you know, I'm not perfect, but we just, you know, have to make the most of what our, our gifts and and, and and really um, go back to our whys of why we're doing what we're doing. Absolutely. It all has to begin with the why, for sure. Definitely. 
Now, when you talk about a launching the blueprint, so you've gotten through all that, and then you talk about launching a blueprint. When you refer to blueprint, what are you referring to? Oh, yeah, so um, you're referring to my training series, right? Ah, so, yeah, okay, so you guys, because I know you've got the training series, and so let's talk, you know, let's talk about that. So I saw the one video, which was amazing. Yeah, thank you so much for for watching. Yeah, I've I've worked tirelessly on those videos, um, Mm. which was was also a lot of fun. Um, So, yeah, in my training series, um, the first two videos, yeah, were about, um, personal branding and extracting your essence and then the second video is about visual branding the third video is the launch blueprint and I as I um, gave away my blueprint for my training series to help empower people to see the big picture of how a launch is done because sometimes when we don't know what we don't know um, it right. scares us you know and it's um it it doesn't empower us to take the the next step and so i wanted to do something to empower my audience to be like hey this is the roadmap this is the blueprint of what you need to do from beginning to end so that you know what action to take wherever you're at in your launch process because some people are like you know, they probably have a website up, but they're not happy with it. And then some people mm-hmm. don't, are not clear on their offerings. So this blueprint, I broke it down into you know, five phases. And this is the exact blueprint that I use in my own system when I work with my clients. Only mm-hmm. um, that I I kind of turned it around and made it a do-it-yourself, launch-yourself um, blueprint. So um, um, can I just quickly go through the phases really quick with you? And your yes, audience? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I cool. Because I want to empower you, listeners, <laughs> so that you can do this on your own. So phase one is um, your brand strategy, and it's when you know you go through like yeah the extraction of your essence. Um, you get to know who your audience is and their pain points, and then um, you have to know your promise. To your clients so that they always have the same experience because people like consistency um, and branding is about consistency um, and also knowing what your offerings are. So that's all done in phase one. Phase two is uh, website content creation. So um, this is all about knowing what content is going to go on your website. And of course, you won't know what's going to go, you know, on your website without phase one, right? So you have to take mm-hmm. everything that you learn from phase one and, like, break it down into, like, the pages of your site, like the home page, your services page, you know, your testimonials, all of that. Um, and then phase two is also when you write your copy because uh, um, after, you know, learning about who you are, your audiences, then you'll be able to communicate it, right? So that's when you write your mm-hmm. copy. And the thing is, um, here's a mistake that um, a lot of people make, uh, and I've seen it happen before. Like, they would write the copy before um, knowing the structure of the website. And the reason mm-hmm. why I always say hold hold on writing your copy until after um, is because you'll tend to overwrite, like, you know, write too much or not have a clear direction on what kind of action you want people to take ask you know when you write it without knowing the structure of the website so always write your copy last after you know all of that yeah yeah and it's and mm-hmm. yeah a lot of time gets wasted <laughs> that way exactly um <laughs> yeah all right so the next phase is visual branding the visual branding is about articulating your brand now in a visual way, so, you know, it's when you have to know what colors represent you. And the thing about colors is so um, funny because we kind of respond to colors um, in, in a psychological way, like certain colors mm-hmm. evoke different emotions. And so we, you know, need to be, like, knowledgeable of what colors um, bring out of people when we choose our colors. Like, for example, I, I chose the colors um, – orange and yellow and teal because it's, you know, it's, it, it emotes, um, like, 
being happy and being positive, you know, so I want to give off that vibe. So those are the colors I chose. And when you choose your colors, you always, again, have to know what colors you like and also what colors will evoke the emotions you want your audience to have. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the formula works, you know, with everything you do with your brand. Um, And, again, like the fonts as well. I mean, there's certain fonts that communicate different things, you know, like like thinner fonts are very sophisticated. And then you have, like, the cursive fonts that, like, convey luxury, right? And then, like, the thick Mm -hmm. fonts are, like, more, like, in your face. So so there's – each of them communicates something different and tell a different story, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then you also have like, you know, your photos and how you show up in your photos. Um and again, photos tell a different story. So, um so applying the formula to that also will give you um um the response you want from the audience. And the thing about photos is that like the photos can capture your essence like it's just so powerful, um, mm-hmm. and so I always tell people invest in a great photographer who can capture the real you, and try to make it look as natural as possible. Like, don't try to stage everything. Like, you know, put a backdrop and put a stage set together. Like, you know, have it in your living room where you invite people over, or have it where you feel in your element. So, and and mm-hmm. being in a space where you feel comfortable to be yourself is going to translate into your photos so much more. And it's, it sure. works so much. So photos are important. Invest in them. And then mm-hmm. so after, um, that was phase three. Phase four is, you know, launching your website. So, again, don't put up your, don't put up your website first. Put it up after mm-hmm. you have all your content, your copy, and your photos, and your graphics. Because mm-hmm. doing it backwards is, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you're going to have to redo it again if you do it that way. Um, and then the last phase is um, online marketing. So online marketing is all about trying to get, you know, people out there in the online world to notice you and, you know, um, and come to your website. And the thing about, all, you know, being online, it, it is getting harder and harder to stand out. And I say this in my yeah. training series. And it's because there's so many of us, like, we're coming out of the shadows and, and feeling more empowered to be seen online and to share our gifts, you know. And so mm-hmm. it's becoming a very noisy world now. And that's why branding is so important more than ever because a lot of people are starting to look like each other. And it's like, <laughs> you know, everyone's, everyone's saying the same thing using the same copy, using the same look and feel. You know, there's a lot of mm-hmm. templates out there now, which is great. I mean, again, with accessibility comes, you know, like noise in the marketplace. Um, mm-hmm. So um, we it's we have all of the tools that we need at our fingertips. We live in such a great time where we are just so blessed with so much information that's available to us online. I mean, I'm... Mm-hmm. I, I'm just, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. This, this is one of my whys, um, yeah. why I'm doing this, is because I grew up, I was born in the Philippines, and yeah. I, I, I migrated here when I was nine. My, my, my parents, you know, brought me here, and mm. I had an amazing life. And uh, five years ago, I went back to where I grew up in the Philippines, and I got so shocked and just so um, amazed at the turn of events that's happened in my life, which were like yeah. you know, these like threat threads of events that led me to this point. And it's been showing me the way to for me to see what I need to do in order to give back to exactly. the world. And it's, and it's been it's, such an amazing journey. Yeah. Well, that's what my, um, my so last I, question wanted. To, I was sorry, my last question wanted to ask you was one thing you can share with the listeners that has helped you on this journey. Oh, okay, perfect. That was reading my mind. Um, yeah, yes. so going back to my story, I went back to the Philippines 
And I saw the kind of life that I would have had. And not that, you know, my relatives weren't happy. They are, like, the most Mm -hmm. happiest people, and they're so content with what they have. They have each other. I have a huge family, so, um, you know, they keep each other company and entertained and all that, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like out of all of them, why was I chosen to come here? Why was I chosen out of all my relatives to 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 come to the United States exactly. and to go go to the schools that I went to, to meet the people that I met and yeah. learn what I and I felt um so. once once I got out I came back and I felt just this rush in my body and I felt just the responsibility that I have, um and the the um just the privilege that I have yeah. to have the and freedom to do what I get to do. And exactly. and from then on, like, you know, I left my job and I was like, if, you know, if, if I become comfortable, I'm not going to be of service to the many people who, and I just felt like there was this, like, huge responsibility that I had. And I was like, right. cool. if, if I don't, exactly. yeah, if I don't, yes. I'm not well, fulfilling who you know my destiny. So exactly. Well, we're glad you so, did, and <laughs> it's just it was so awesome to have you on the show today and to share this and really helping you know sm- uh, small business owners and just people really getting their essence and their branding and them out there that's unique from everybody else. So we want to really thank you again so much for being on the show Donna it was just great to have you and we look forward to seeing what else is coming out there and we'll have all the information you have that free training video series as well and um, we'll get something on the video as well that where people can actually find that too and how they can get to it because we'll have your web information all that on there so thank you again for joining us today we really appreciate that thank you Linda thank you for everything that you do you're welcome, and thank you for all the listeners who joined us uh, today and the ones who will be joining us via YouTube. We thank you so much. Please follow, subscribe, comment, and like us. And you can join me January 7th next year. Wow, it's already the 6th, 2016. For the next show, Four Ways to Jumpstart Your Health Now with Angela Kujer Kenmegni. So with that, thank you again, Donna, and thank you for all the listeners again, and we'll see you guys real soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.